in a week where I've finally mastered, potentially, hopefully, the uh, the complexities of OBS and um, how crap my computer is, um, to England progressing in the under 21s European competition, we are back with the FDT TV podcast. I am joined, as always, by the very lovely Mr. Ian Barker. And we are here to talk about things football, but because we are in the off season at the moment, there isn't a great deal to speak about. Um, apologies for the the lack of podcast last week. For those of you that do tune in regularly, I um, was a bit of a donut, and well, I say I, I don't actually know what happened because we were recording. We were about ten minutes in, and then my computer stopped recording. So that's why there wasn't a podcast last week. So we do uh, sincerely apologise, but hopefully. No mess ups today, Ian. No mess ups today. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. I think the the England under twenty ones are actually more entertaining than the first team. But I mean, it's it's a it's a slow news week, isn't it, for football? It's been a very slow nothing, news week. Nothing's happened. No, and not we it's... can't even talk about like transfer dramas or anything as yet because there's not really much that's kicked off. Um, in the way of transfers, obviously, if um, if my podcast would have recorded last week, we would have um, seen that Jude Bellingham has completed his move um, to Real Madrid for roughly around about eighty eight million pounds. Um, just very quickly on that, I know we briefly touched on it on the podcast that never was, but do you think that's a good move for him? Uh, I, I I think it's a difficult move for him. He. We, we've seen some players go to Real Madrid and thrive. We've seen other players go to Real Madrid and really struggle. It's it's a, a hard place to, to play and you can't have an off game mm-hmm. because the fans will be on you. Um it's it's he's got he's got a good squad around him. Um some of the younger players there, Rodrigo, Vinicius Junior coming sort of to flourish him. Um, obviously, Modric today has extended his stay as well. Yep. So that's sort of an elder states of the game who they, I imagine they will have kept on to try and guide some of those younger midfield players because Bellingham's, what, 19? 20. I think you've got two of many. 20? Two, 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 two of many is, is, is like, it's definitely under 20, and so is Camavinga. So looking over the next five years phenomenal like that if they continue progressing at the rate they have done that's going to be a phenomenal midfield but actually at the minute to to bring a bit of calm you've still got Tony Cruz there you've still got Luka Modric so I mean these these are players who've been around the block then they're not new to it so if if he can if he can learn from it and and thrive I I think it'd be all right I I just think he he may be um, a victim of his own transfer fee, which is not really his fault. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think we could see over the next year or two, I think he could end up being spat out somewhere else, whether that be the Premier League or the Saudi League, because they're buying everybody. Um, so w- w- wait and see. Yeah. I'm, it's got that's, potential. That's that's what I was literally just about to say. So um, obviously it's a lot of pressure, I think, on, on someone so young. Obviously we have seen uh certainly in recent times these astronomical transfer fees um where some of them haven't worked out whereas some of them have have done okay and i think it's it's more harsh on the the ones with the the large transfer fee and it doesn't work out as you said because it kind of puts that pressure on uh the player straight away and even for someone so young, relatively speaking, in terms of a footballing brain and all that sort of stuff, if they they have an off game or a couple of off games in the season, they're kind of uh, under scrutiny from the get go. And I suppose for players that um, have such significant high transfer bills at such a young age, I mean, f- for me. I can't even remember what I was doing at 20 years old, let alone um, de- <laughs> demanding that sort of wages. Do you know what I mean? Um, it's it's um, it's I think it's a little bit unfair, but at the same time, obviously, for there there is obviously some quality about him or about these sorts of players, and therefore they are expected to kind of hit the ground running. Um, let alone thinking, obviously, that their peak is probably a good five six years away anyway. 
um yeah but yeah it's 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 crazy when you look at some of these um some of these transfer fees and and obviously the the payments that are due with them um speaking of transfers i think this is pretty much what um this one or this podcast is going to be about as it stands at the moment um we have got oh you want to you want to go straight into we'll go straight into what? Declan Rice I just, I just, I have had a thought. Uh, having, having had the week to sit on it and and think about the Jude Bellingham transfer fee, which was a hundred million pound, and with additions to rise to something like hundred nineteen million, something like that. Um, when you look at his career, or, although Real Madrid, you you would argue he maybe are paying for his potential because he's twenty. Declan Rice is only twenty. Four. Three, 24 he and when when you comparatively compare the two i would say rice is a better player he's had he's played more games at a higher level um they've won an equal amount of trophies um because bellingham has won the german cup with dortmund and rice has obviously won the conference league it's it's one of those where you look at the two comparatively uh, for what you're getting, bang for your buck, you're you're guaranteed. Uh, you know what you're getting with Declan Rice. With Jude Bellingham, I think there is some development there still needed. But the fact, looking at it, I thought he'd had a more successful career being at Dortmund. Um, and and when you look at, for me, the two the two teams that they play for, obviously Dortmund, I would say is a bigger club than West Ham. Well. Yeah, they are a big club in West Ham because they they won league titles. They they play in Champions League football, so in that sense, you would say there's better players in that team. They're the best second biggest club in Germany. Mm-hmm. West Ham. We I mean when you look at us this this season, we were we were awful. We probably didn't play to our, our best in the Premier League, but he, he dragged us to safety. He dragged us to winning a a, a European title. Surely that would make him worth more than what Jude Bellingham is, and that was the that was the, the thought in my head. Yeah, well, hang on, because Jude, he, all right, he's got four years on Jude Bellingham, maybe, but he's he's played a lot more games at a higher level. And you think, well, there's there's ebbs and flows, if not equal to it. So he's got to be worth at least equal to him, which is 120 million pound all in. Yeah. I see, I, I see the logic. I mean, I um, I've I've seen various different reports. So just um, just quickly touching on this. Obviously, Declan Rice is a player that Arsenal have have been following for a little while. Uh, for for those of you that don't know, yeah. um, <clears throat> plays for West Ham in midfield, and uh, there have been reports of around about ninety million pounds uh, that Arsenal have offered. Now, this time last week, there was also rumours about Manchester City coming in for Declan Rice, yeah. um, but yet to uh, lodge an official bid. Now, come Friday, um, I think was the day that everyone was expecting for the bid to come in from Manchester City, but so far, still no official bidders yet. Now, checking the rumour mill, that is Twitter and all all types of social media <clears throat> there are various different reports saying he's close to joining city he's close to joining arsenal um no interest in manchester united uh on i can't remember who the other club was um that declan rice has been linked to but as of yet there's still been no bids and apparently um the owners of West Ham are coming out saying that they wanted to spark a bit of a bidding war which obviously makes sense because they want to get as much money for for the player as possible now, for for me, I'm desperately trying not to get involved in all the transfer hype, as I've said on so many occasions when it comes to tr- it comes around to transfer windows. Uh, until such time as the player signs on the dotted line for whatever club, I'm trying not to get <laughs> excited or frustrated about. And I've it still baffles me even to this day. Um, when you go onto the likes of social media and you see this player has been linked, um, and you get well-known, um, 
what well, I, I can't think of what they call like transfer spies is <laughs> you know, like you for yeah. Fabrizio Romano's and, and all that sort of stuff um but um where was I going with this the it's, it's hard not to get suckered into all of it um so like I said last last week obviously it broke that Manchester City were interested and then the the outcry of um Arsenal fans on uh, on social media, I've got to say, is a little bit embarrassing. Um, calling people effing and jeffing words, calling see you next Tuesdays, all this sort of stuff. Arteta out, Edu out, because they haven't managed to get the deal done. Get Just pay the extra £10 million and all this sort of stuff. And I've, I've been wanting to say this analogy for ages, that anyone who's put that sort of thing on social media, I want to just go to them in person and say, what's your favourite car? And they tell me what their favourite car is. And I go, go and buy it. Oh, well, I can't because I can't yep. afford it. Well, it's a, it's all comparative, you div. It's a business. You have a budget. Yep. Um, and I'll just be like, well, just pay, just pay the extra. Just pay the, the 100,000. Just, just go yeah, and buy it. Yeah. yeah. And it, it, it still baffles me. And we've, we've said this analogy on so many times about... Oh, it's not a game of ultimate team. You can't just order a pack, open it up and go, oh, look, I've got a, a, a gold Declan Rice or a shiny Declan Rice or whatever the fucking hell <laughs> these players are. Well, uh, <laughs> people have, have the money on, on the ultimate team that probably could have bought a few players. Yeah. It's, uh... Yeah, but even, even those, they're kind of like sponsorship back, backed. Even when they're opening a the packs, they're getting mm. like these companies or whatever to... Pay them thousands in order to to go and purchase these packs. I know a lot of the 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 top stream people make their money from doing the streams and advertising on YouTube and all that sort of stuff. So they can just pump crazy money into it. But it's oh anyway, I'm not going to get dragged into it. But um, it's yeah, I, I think you you've hit now on the head. It's not it's not as simple as just pumping up more te- ten million quid. There's a lot more goes into these deals. Just. What, what what it does on 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 the game of FIFA, but it, it's it's one of those that what what gets me is we've been very open since sort of last summer as to how much it's going to cost. There's there's not been any grey area. It's it's over a hundred million pound. We're looking for one hundred and twenty, but it's definitely over a hundred hundred million pound up front. And and to have seemingly. I don't want to use the words tapped up the player, but from all the all, all, all angles, it looks like you did tap up the player in mid-season, which I don't think you was allowed to do anymore. What was a big hoo-ha about that a couple of years ago. To then come in and try and lowball a man who's in charge of West Ham, who is notorious for business deals and not budging on what he wants, I just think he's sort of waving the red red flag to a ball what it's do you just like well sorry go on go on i was just gonna say what <clears throat> what do you what would you de- be disappointed with if arsenal come in and agree an agreement has been made and it is a yep. x amount of pounds but it's below what the asking price is so obviously you just mentioned between 100 and 120 million pounds what would you be disappointed yeah. to have got? What would be the bottom line for you? No, I, I, I don't think it, the, the money side of it doesn't bother me. Mm-hmm. Um, as a club, he's yes, he's come through our academy. He has, at the end of part of his academy career, come through our academy. He's worked his way into the first team. He's now worth X man. If we get £30 million, pound, we've made a profit on him. That That's the way I look at it from that. I'm not interested in the business side of it because I don't have a vested interest in that side of the, the club. I'm a fan, so so ideally you would say we don't sell him and we manage to get him to stay on and we build a team around him for success to compete at the highest level. Are we likely to be able to do that? I think that's a that's a hopeful situation. Um, I, I think that's the least likely of all the situations, if I'm totally honest with you. Um what gets me, and, and say we discussed it briefly just before the podcast, is he said he wanted to leave to play at the highest level and win trophies. 
And we've spoke about Harry Kane before and the fact that he's not won anything, meaning that actually he is a phenomenal goal scorer. There's, there's no arguing that. Is he a good player? No, because he's not won anything. There's no legacy there. And to to the to leave to go to Arsenal and go, OK, we're likely, you might win an FA Cup. You, are you going to win a Champions League next year? No. Are you going to win the, league the, the year after? No. You might challenge, but you, I think you're looking at least three or four years before you can go, we're, we're definitely, it might be an odd year, but we're definitely going to win a Champions League or be to the final. And the same with the Premier League. I think this year was your best chance at winning it. Man City are that sort of, I don't want to use the Marvel analogy of Thanos, he's inevitable, but they're going to win stuff. And if you have the choice between the two, I know, uh, as you said, Man City are not raising any bids until he's confirmed to them he'd be interested in, in moving. But when you look at Bayern Munich, we're interested in him. Um, Man City allegedly are interested in him. You go to those places, you're going to win trophies. You're going to win German Cups. You're going to win league titles, FA Cups. You're going to challenge every year and get to at least the semi-finals of the Champions League, which is the sort of the creme de la creme, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So if he leaves to challenge <coughs> trophies, no, he leaves on a free. All the best to you. You've given us, you've given us some fantastic times. You, you, you've, you've worn your heart on your sleeve. You, you've, you've been up front about it. You've given it your all in every game. If he leaves and then doesn't win anything with Arsenal for the next four years, then that piss me off because he's like, well, you haven't you haven't left to try and win something because, all right, you you might go, oh well, they're going to challenge, but you had the opportunity to go to guaranteed, and you didn't, and that that's the bit that gets me. Is that I I think Arsenal are, you're not the team you once were, and I think you are still a project team. Mm -hmm. I, I think yeah, there's potential there because you've got some phenomenal young players, but it's not guaranteed. It's not a, I'm going to go to Arsenal and win trophies. Because you didn't, you didn't win anything this year. What, what did you win last year? Nothing. So, it's like the last two years, I think the year before that you won an FA Cup, didn't you? Or was that the year before that? I think it was the year before that. So, you've had three <coughs> years, you've won... Unless you can count the Community know, Shield. What, no, <laughs> I think that's a it's a glorified friendly, but it's it's one of those that you have potential there, and I think you have more potential to win. But that said, we have improved our team in 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 terms of of players and depth than we did when we was in Europa League last time, and that's what let us down. And I had I I had a little bit of a daydream this morning that West Ham, if you sign him. You'll get knocked out of the Champions League, drop down to Europa League, and then he will he will be playing for you, and we'll knock you out of the Europa League, and it will be like, well, you shouldn't have gone anywhere. That's just in my head. I was like, if that's a like that's a likely scenario, um, but yeah, I think he, he's been up front with the fans. He if he leaves because he wants to win trophies, he he needs to go to Man City. Going to Manchester United, I think, is the same thing as Arsenal. You might win the odd thing, but it's not guaranteed. Same with Chelsea. Chelsea are throwing money at things, but it's not guaranteed. Man City, you've got you've still got Haaland up front. You've still got De Bruyne playing, arguably for a midfielder coming into the sort of peak of his career from passing. They're, they're throwing money at, at, say, some of the best players in the world at the minute. Got Guardiola from Leipzig. Looks like he's he's likely to go there. So defensively, they're going to get better. And it's just like I can't I can't make an argument for him to move across London. If he said I want to go to a bigger club to compete more often, then you'd go okay. But he didn't. He said I want to leave to go and win trophies and compete at the highest level. Then go and do that. You've had you've got two 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 teams who will who you will do that with year in year out, regardless. And that, and I think that's the bit that for, for West Ham fans we find frustrating is potentially if we have if 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 we get a hundred million for him and we invest that wisely we could be competing at the same maybe not Champions League level but FA Cup run next year Europa League 
we could be there's definitely two trophies there up for grabs. And I think that's the likelihood for Arsenal as well. You've got a league in FA Cup. I think that's your likely trophies next year. And you think if we're both competing for two, why move? But more do I know. <laughs> no, I think it's a very well that, articulated. That's just my no, I think that's a very well arti articulated yeah. argument. Um, <clears throat> and that's kind of why I was kind of pushing that question because um, <clears throat> I th there's there's been transfers that obviously have, have upset upset me in the past. Now, I'm not saying this whole Declan Rice thing isn't, um, or has upset you. I'm just saying it from from my perspective. Obviously, yeah. Van Persie, I think, is a perfect example um, <clears throat> where at that particular point, Manchester United were kind of hitting the heights again. And obviously, when... Um, Van yep. Persie went, he left He left and said he wanted to go off and win trophies. Obviously, he went to Manchester United and won, a tro won the Premier League. Um, I think with the likes of Michael Owen and, and stuff there as well. So, um, I, I, get, I get what you're saying. Obviously, we are, you're right, we are still a project team. And I think now, obviously, I don't want to be kind of blindsided by how well we did last year. Um, but it's, it's nice to see, obviously, that there have been, I know they are, <clears throat> excuse me, only speculations and stuff at the moment. And again, until their names are signed on the dotted line, obviously, we won't know what's going to happen. But even, it's, it's not, sorry, just to kind of backtrack on that point. Um, it's nice to see that the rumours are coming out that we're looking to strengthen in the positions which I think we are, or that we have needed. Um, and there are still some players at the club, I think, that their time is done. Um, your Pepe's, for example, um, Eddie Nketiah. I'm not, I'm not saying I would like Eddie Nketiah to go because he, d he definitely did a job for us. As I obviously, he only just signed a new contract with the number 14 shirt. Very iconic shirt. Um, but... Um, I I look at him and think he could flourish under another team getting regular football because let's be honest if Gabriel Jesus is is injury free he's going to be the preferred option under the Ar the Arteta um, regime likewise with his yep. Zinchenko's and looking at Tierney um, looking mm -hmm. at Martinelli and Saka when you've got the likes of Pepe, um, fucking, we got Cedric Suarez as another example, another player coming back who was out on loan last year. Um, there's there are some Deadwood players. Deadwood is very harsh. I do apologise. Um, we have some fringe players. I think could do with going on and get moving on to different clubs, um, which would obviously free up funds, free up salaries and stuff, and we can look to obviously strengthen with better quality in those positions. Um, I'm trying to remember where I was going with this. Uh, yeah, so uh, just going back, um, like I said, it is nice that we there, there are the rumours coming out that we are looking to recruit and strengthen in those positions. And this is kind of the point I was trying to get at last week when we didn't when we recorded but didn't record. Um, that it's it's been frustrating for me as an Arsenal fan looking at how well we've come over the course of the last two years you're right there's no guarantees that next year that we're going to be able to replicate that even better um, but you would hope with the the reinforcements that we're getting you would like to think we could be able to remain there or thereabouts certainly within top four I'm not necessarily saying we're going to get a championship or um, a second place again but all these mm -hmm. other teams fans listening to him saying well do you not think Chelsea are going to improve next year do you not think Manchester United are going to be better next year do you not think such and such is going to be like Spurs are going to be back next year do you not think and it's been frustrating as an Arsenal fan because whilst I do agree um sorry Liverpool You're trying to improve. yeah we're trying yeah. to improve our team and building on the foundation of a team that finished second last year um I don't understand why people think that Arsenal are going to somehow drop back down into seventh and eighth position again. I this, this is a point I was going to bring up to you actually, and and I think if you can get Julian Timber from Ajax, I think that's a phenomenal signing. Um, a very sought after player plays at centre back, 
can play defensive midfield and, and, and right back and would bring a solidness to your back line. And I think he would challenge for a starting spot across that back line pretty much. Um, but certainly would bring that much needed squad depth that you need. Number one, Kai Havertz. That's an odd signing for me. Um, when you look at him playing it, when he played in Europe, you, you very much said, oh, it's the next Mesut Ozil uh, sort of player. He's gone to Chelsea and he's been given that sort of striker role. He's not a striker. He's a creative attacking midfielder. And for me, obviously, I understand you want to create more chances because if you create more chances, you theoretically should score more goals. And Dick Rice, obviously, as a defensive midfielder. But when, when you look at those those bits, I think for me, crying out for Arsenal, I know you've got Jesus, who, creative again, creatively, is very good, gets into spaces, draws players out. I think you're missing a 25-goal-a-season striker. I, and, and the bit that gets me with that is you, the money you're trying to get Declan Rice for, you could go and buy Victor Osherman from, from Napoli, who is had, coming off the back of a phenomenal season, full of confidence... So you're probably getting for the same price you're getting Kai Havertz, if I'm totally honest. Um, and it's like, why would you go and buy a player who's not scoring goals, he's not creating chances, he's devoid of confidence to try and bring into your team, rather than going and buying the guy who's scoring for fun and is full of confidence and will bring 25, 30 goals a season to your to your team. Um and that, for me, for a fan, that that makes it look like well, maybe the priority. Obviously, Arteta sees it week in, week out, and, and, and knows what he wants to do with that team. He, he's got rid of a lot of players that that don't fit his philosophies. Mm -hmm. um, but but I I I think the added, as I said, the added pressure of Champions League next year, the added pressure of will we finish last year, so we should be matching that or better in it, because at no point does any fan. In, in the best will in the world, even when you're trying to keep your feet on the floor, think, ah, oh, fourth will be all right next year. No, way on. We, f we finished second, and for a long time, we were leading. We should be doing that again. And and I think the fact that, say, I, as you said, Liverpool will be better next year. They're, they're bringing in some decent players. Um, they're, they're still looking to, to challenge. Chelsea have got Pochettino. Again, I don't think they're going to win anything, but they will be back in the races. They're not going to be sort of driving blind as they have been um, this season. Uh, Postecoglou, as, as we, we quite aptly got his name right every time last week, um, I, I think will be one to watch. Again, I don't think Tottenham are going to win anything, but I think they're going to be a lot more competitive. They're going to be a lot more on the front foot this year. And it may be sort of that Bielsa results where they'll go and blow the team away 8-0 and then get, get beat 6-0 the, the following week where someone figures out you put the ball over the top and you, you, you're in. Um, but but with that, Man City, are, I think, are going to win four on the top. I, I, I can't see any different. All right, they've lost Gundogan. But they're going to replace him. They're going to mm. replace him with somebody. It may not be Declan Rice. They're going to replace him with somebody, and that somebody isn't going to be a slouch, are they? Let's let's be realistic. Um, then I think you've got. I think Liverpool will be back at it next year. They, you, you see, last year they were not at the races for a long time, but they they were stop start, wasn't they? Yeah. And I think next year they're going to be a bit more fluid um, with it. So I think they're going to take second spot. And then you've got, the, and this is the difficulty, because do Newcastle flounder as well? Do they go and invest big money? But then you've got the, the likelihood of Chelsea, I think that third and fourth spot are likely to be one of Arsenal, Man United, Chelsea, Tottenham, Newcastle. It's, it's four teams, four teams, five teams that it could be. And I, I think we've... You, you threw all your eggs in the Premier League basket this year. I think next year it's going to be you're going to throw all your eggs in a Champions League basket. I think you've got to get through that group stage and you've got to not be beaten. Because if you make some of the mistakes you made in the Premier League in the Champions League, 
I think the the quality of opposition will punish you every 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 game. Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Even the lesser team. I mean, you look at the Celtic Real Madrid. Celtic played Real Madrid off the park for seventy five minutes. Lost. I think they lost three one or three nil in the end. But but had they scored their chances, they they created the same amount of chances as Man City did. Man City just put them away. Yeah. Um, if you get beaten one or two times there, convincingly, I mean, the draw hasn't been done yet, has it? No. So, could you? You don't know who you could get. You're not going to be one of the top seeds in it because you're not. You haven't been in it for a little while. So you could get a really horrendous draw. Say you get Real Madrid and I don't know Dortmund and Ajax. Like the, that's a horrible group to play because they're all going to be competitive games. They're all going to be hard games. Um, and and then you could, if you get beaten, my my fear is for Arsenal is that will hang over certainly with the fans, but maybe some of those younger players who haven't had that experience. I know they're building experiences as they go along, but that that hangover then to the league of we just got played off the park. Oh, it's gonna hopefully it don't happen this year. And I I think players you hear them talk about it ex-pros and, and you see it week in week out if you once they, they get in their own heads it's a very hard mentality to get out of and they, they sometimes are their own worst enemies they could go and win a number of games but they're worried about making that mistake they're worried about losing the ball and, and all of a sudden it, it sort of comes into fruition and that that's what happens and that's what even with strengthening that's, that's what my feel for Arsenal would be extra games uh, unrealistic expectation, knowing that there are going to be more com- more competitive teams next year. It doesn't say say you're not a competitive team, but more competitive teams. Mm-hmm. I think you get two or three bad runs and an injury. How do you how do you kick start it again? It's not like this year where there were a number of teams not at the races. I think that there's there's a bit like the Leicester season. It's, it's going to be once every 10, 15 years that that happens. Hmm. I can't be less than that, but that that's my that's my theory. You're going to be competing for third or fourth. I don't think you're going to compete top top two. Just you've got the extra added games, and and hopefully you do. I mean, I I would like to see all seven teams go right to the, the wire, and actually it comes down to the last two weeks: who's going to finish seventh and who's going to win the title. That for me would be phenomenal. Yeah, and, and I think worldwide, one would like to see that. It makes a spectacle of it. I think. But I between, think that's... sorry, I was going to say between between extra games and VAR, I think your season has already failed. <laughs> yeah, if uh, if VAR definitely got anything to do with it, the um, we are we are screwed. Um, but I. I, I do agree with with a lot of what you just said there, especially with the season coming down to kind of like the last couple of weeks, who will win it? Because let's let's be honest. I mean, I know we got as we've mentioned before, ninety three percent of the season uh, at the top of the league just to be pipped at the um, at the last of it with a, a string of a, a few dodgy results. But um, it did get a little bit more exciting again because of. Who was competing for third and fourth? Who was competing for the the Europa League spots? Um, I think that that played out more because at the point that Manchester City went top, I think that was the point that it was done. Um, because obviously that we we were playing with a game in hand for quite a while and didn't capitalise on a few two nil two nil leads that we had um, in a few certain games, but. It, it is what it is, and I do agree with you. Um, it is going to be a lot more competitive. I I think the thing that was just bugging me is the fact that um, <clears throat> there, there seems to be this general consensus that Arsenal are going to be back down to 7th and 8th. And obviously, we don't know what's going to happen uh, in terms of the transfer market, injuries, um, squad. Uh, sorry, fixture congestion. They could all play a massive part in... How the season plays out, but I w- I would like to think that we will be competitive again next year, and from mm-hmm. if we do manage to secure some of the signings that I've seen us linked with again, try not to get um 
embroiled in in the whole kind of transfer speculation. Um, it will be good if some of those signings do come off. And I'm actually quite, I've got to be honest, I'm quite excited about that, the, the Kai Havertz um, transfer, because this is one that seems to be the, the closest deal, certainly from an Arsenal perspective, uh, in order to be completed. And again, according to, to sources, um, <clears throat> Twitter, uh, that, that deal is likely to be completed this week, because apparently he was having his yeah. medical this weekend, yeah. and um, the deal should be completed this week. So he will be unveiled unless there's some like massively unforeseen circumstance he will be an Arsenal player this week um, but yeah I'm, I'm excited I, to see what will happen with that it, it will be interesting how he plays alongside Ma Martin Odegaard because they're both very similar players in terms of creativity and I I, I do think the biggest thing with Kai Havertz is he's never hit he's never hit the heights that he did in Germany with Chelsea um, which isn't unusual for the Premier League he is a bit older now, a bit more wiser. But I think he needs a confidence boost. Mm. There's not there's not a single Chelsea player this year that has cut that, that will be coming out this season going like backing themselves, going, I'm the best in the world. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And and I think if he if he can't get that early on in the season, I think he'll have another torrid year. And because he, he did have chances, he did score. I think he's seven goals on, on one assist, something like that, um, last year as Chelsea's main strike, which is an awful return. Um, but it's it, he was missing chances and 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 making decisions that an informed, confident player doesn't think about. You could see the cogs turning in his head. What do I need to do? Where do I need to put this? Where? player informing confidence it just they go through the motions and it happens so I think it could be an interesting signing and, and so as I said he, he was sort of he did remind me in, in his younger days when he played in Germany out of, of a Mesut Ozil sort of type of player so maybe he had a couple of phenomenal seasons under you and then spouted his mouth off about the Chinese or something didn't he um I've sorry, I've just been looking at uh, Twitter just to see if there are any updates um, on the, the whole situation. Can't see anything as yet. Yeah, um, still nothing. But um, one transfer I did want to uh, talk about um, yep. is someone that we mentioned, I think, towards the back end of last season and certainly at the start of the end of the season, if that makes sense. Harry Kane, mm -hmm. yeah. um, obviously hasn't got left long left on his contract. Um, he is getting to uh, closer to thirty. I think it'll be thirty as and when the season starts, or possibly this this side of Christmas. Um, he will be thirty mm -hmm. years old. What do you think is going to happen to Harry Kane? Um, I well. It's, it's strange because Postia Coglu, as Harry Kane will not call him, <laughs> has had... We spoke about this briefly last week, but, but obviously no one other than us heard it. <laughs> he has a, a habit of going into clubs. He didn't do it so much at Celtic, but did a little bit. Going into clubs and selling the fan favourite players. The, play, the, big, the big players, the, the high earners, and bringing in his own people who fit his philosophies, fit his ways of working. And I, I think Harry Kane could be that. He likes that high press, that quick off off the front foot. Harry Kane's not that sort of striker. He is a goal scorer. And you have to look at it from the perspective of he will want to... He, he, he scored 30 goals last year in arguably one of the worst Premier League sides. I think. Um, so you can't argue with that return. So will he make space for him? I think he probably will as a goal scorer, not maybe as, a, as in his philosophy, but I think Harry Kane will try and change his game as he did under Mourinho where he dropped deeper that season, got a ridiculous amount of assists as well. Yeah. Um, but he's in the last year of his contract this year. And I think he, it, 
deep down in, he, in his heart of hearts, does he want to go down as a top of legend? Yes, of course he does. But when you look at legacy and players that are remembered, does he want to be remembered by Tottenham fans or does he want to be remembered by everybody worldwide? If he goes and joins Bayern Munich, as I said with Declan Rice, he will be guaranteed to compete for trophies. He'll be guaranteed to win trophies. He'll, he, he'll be guaranteed to compete for the Champions League for the rest of his career while he's there. So, Daniel Levy is, again, a businessman. I think he will have had a, a sit-down with Harry Kane and had a quite frank conversation and I think realises actually... We're gonna we're gonna lose in one way or another, so if a bid comes in, we're gonna accept it. I think he'll probably go for about sixty million quid, plus a few add-ons, um, because I I can't see any I can't see him letting go on a free. Mm. It just it doesn't make any sense to let him go on a free where you have got a big change, new manager, new philosophy, different ma different styles. What you've had over the last four or five years. Let's let's back into the hill, and the best way to do that, without breaking the bank, is to sell Harry Kane. So I, I think I think that he's been linked with Bayern Munich again, hasn't he? Hmm. Is that the one you've seen? Why would you not go? The only thing, I, the only thing I can think. For Harry Kane. Sorry. I said I can't see I can't see a, a valid argument. If that offer, if that offer does come in and it is legitimate, I can't see an argument for why he would want to stay at Spurs. The only thing I can think that would keep him from doing that is a family issue. Um, <clears throat> that's that's the only thing I can think that would stop Harry Kane from upping sticks and moving over to 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 Germany. Um, but if you're Bayern Munich and, and that's going to stop you, I think if they accept a bid for Bayern Munich, I think Manchester United will come back in, if I'm not totally honest. I think that will open the door. And then you go, hmm, OK. I could go to Manchester United. Because, uh, as I said, Manchester United, much like Arsenal, a project team, you see what Ten Hag wanted to do last year. And had they had a 30-goal-a-season striker, which is what Harry Kane is, uh, they would have been much more competitive in a lot of fields. Um, but it's if you're Bayern Munich and you're Harry Kane, you go, oh, we're going to offer you three hundred fifty thousand pound a week. Oh, and yeah, okay, fly home every weekend or every two days a week, whatever, to make that happen. I think that they will. It's not that far. No, no, it's what a couple of hours on the plane. Three yeah, hours, hour I think. Yeah, um, three hour flight. Maybe. Especially when it's a, a private chartered jet. Do you know what I mean? It's not like it's... He's not going to be on easy jet going into South End. It's, <laughs> you never well, know. He might be. He might be. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm very interested to see how that one plays out. Obviously, we've still got quite a few weeks left um, before... Well, I say quite a few weeks. There's, what, four, six, seven, seven weeks till the start of the season now? So actually, there's been thinking there's loads of time left before the start of the league. Um, there's actually not that much time. Uh, so clubs, get your fingers out, get your transfers done. Um, it's like tax year end, working in the finance industry, leaving everything till uh, till the actual tax year end day um, to make any of your investments or whatever. It's crazy. Don't understand why people do it, but at the same time, I do actually quite enjoy deadline day because there's always one or two surprises that um, pop up. Um, just very quickly, obviously, we've mentioned um, the the Arsenal rumours. Um, obviously, we've spoken a little bit about Harry Kane and obviously England under 21s. Um, but let's just very quickly talk about West Ham. Um, any speculations or anything for uh, for you? Only only outs from what I've seen. Um, obviously, Skaka like he, he potentially is going to go back to Italy. Um, I think he's wanted, but hasn't had a good season he's had injuries he's had a bit of a torrid time in front of goal it's a different style of football to what he's used to playing so I think he, he's probably on the way back out um, Lanzini's left he's, he's got on a free I mean good player for us why it lasted um, 
towards the last few years wasn't maybe at the heights that he, he hit. Had a couple of good games. We should have sold him to Liverpool for forty-five million pound after the, the first season we had him when he linked up with Payet. But well, hindsight is twenty-twenty, isn't it? Um, the only the only other big big name I've seen linked out with us is Jared Bowen, uh, and. That, I think, arguably would be a more controversial move than Declan Rice. Uh, because the team that are making noises about wanting him are Tottenham. So, he would fit... When you look at the way Postecoglou plays, Jared Bowen is number one target. Do you know what I mean? That That's the perfect sort of player that will, will run his socks off. And, and cuts in, um, makes space, and can can defend, can can go forward. Uh, I think that would be a controversial one. I think if if the bid does start, I think Newcastle are also linked with him. But I mean, stranger things have happened. Could he leave? I don't know. If if Rice leaves, Skamaka leaves, and then you go, mm, no, I'm going to go too because we could have an awful season next year. Let's, let's let's be totally honest. If if we if we lose if we lose Rice, we lose Skamaka, we're not investing in a new goalkeeper, which is just frankly ridiculous. Um then it's it's like, well, okay, Cresswell's <coughs> older now. Bonner, they've given them one year to that that's not gonna work out well. A Gerd is he's okay, but he's not the best, but again has been linked with moves away. Kurt Zoom is all right when he's fit, and you're like, wow. when you look at it, we we could be in for another torrid season. It's it depending on on how they recruit, and 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 that's the hard thing with, as as we said, with Declan Rice commanding such a high fee, the fee for everybody from West Ham has gone up because we well, are getting, we know you're getting at least 100, 100 million, so uh, we want some of that. So that makes it much that much harder to, to, to recruit uh, and to get the right recruitments in. It seems to have been difficult for West Ham anyway. So, mm. yeah, oh, only links with outs. I've not seen any ins. Okay, so we'll obviously have to watch this space and um, hopefully, <clears throat> well, maybe, obviously when it comes to, uh, to, to next week, we may have some confirmed... Uh, ins and outs and maybe something a bit more interesting is going to happen this week so um, <clears throat> Ian have you got anything else you want to um, want to discuss um, I was only going to say about Saudi buying all the players it's, it, oh yes you, you used, used to be just sort of the, the older to, towards the end of their career players going but we've seen Ruben Neves go we've seen there's loads of players that are now going and as with a number of sports, golf, um, tennis, they're trying to take over um, the boxing. There is this throw money at it, sort of sports whitewashing of of we we want all the best, all the stuff, and we want it over here, and we want it for us. Um, and I, I think at some point there's going to have to be some form of investigation through FIFA as to hang on, how's this work? Because the 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 league that's got all of the money and all of the TV rights and brings in record-breaking revenues and sponsorships, the players are leaving there to go and earn more money at a league where no one watches. Well, the Saudis obviously watch, but where's all this money coming from? And I think the answer will be, oh, it's all legitimate because backhand are from the Saudis to FIFA because that... Has happened before. We see it with the Qatari World Cup. That's how they got that. That was proven. Um, so, I, I th- some of these players are probably jumping on the bandwagon while it lasts. So, I don't think it will last forever. The, the amount of money they're spending on players and wages, it, it can't last forever. Um, I think it's it's a fun toy while it lasts. Um, but yeah, interesting times because that seems to be. You wouldn't have pegged Ruben Neves to go to Al Al Jazeera or wherever he's gone to, would you? No. But it's it's probably the combination of the warm weather, the lifestyle, the money. I've got to be honest. If if someone offered me um, a ridiculous amount of money, I'd probably jump ship and say, "See ya." Um, but yeah, I, I don't 
don't begrudge any of the players for taking the opportunity that's presented to them. Um, the World Cup, I thought, was a success overall, although yep. the way of means about getting it and how it's built and some of the things with that, you can't believe everything in the media, but you can't necessarily agree with all of it. It's, it's probably not all one way, not all the other. It's somewhere in the middle. Um, so I don't begrudge them, but I just think it's... It, it, the Premier League at the minute, I think, is is going to struggle to call itself the best league in the world. Hmm. Much longer. Yep. I should say. Yes. I say bring on that streaming platform as well so you can you can choose which game you want to watch as and when you want to watch it. Um, that's my suggestion yep. to the FA because I think you get a hell of a, hell of a lot more people um, <clears throat> signing up to that idea as you do with a Netflix subscription or your Disney Plus subscription, and um, instead of being robbed by the people at Sky Sports uh, on a monthly basis. Not saying that I begrudge uh, Sky Sports, because I think it's a fantastic um, set of channels with some very quality viewing, um, but there's some times where I want to watch my game, it's not available. So, um, <clears throat> very frustrating having to uh, just listen to the game on the Arsenal player. Um, but yes, <clears throat> other than that, that's uh, a conversation for another time. But um, if you have a, if if you have stuck around for this long, thank you very much. We have um, obviously just been kind of winging it this week because there's not really been much uh, in the way of sports. If there's anything you want to hear, either myself or Ian talk about, um, or if you want to contribute to uh, today's topics, obviously leave a comment down in the comment section and make sure you, make sure you are subscribed um, for all future comment uh, content, not comment. Um, but yes, other than that, I have been Mike. I've been Ian. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>